These people don't have friends, Angel. They have interests. I think we, as uh, thoughtful people engaged in like cultural production on our end of you know working in small spaces and really trying to bring experimental works uh, to fruition. It's like we need to see ourselves in the world um, and it's valuable. I'm Laura Parnas and I make multi-platform installations and experimental films, usually for a gallery setting. Often they deal with issues related to counterculture, um, there's music involved, uh, and also questions about the nature of rebellion. Tour That End uh, is a multi-platform installation uh, that includes actors, musicians, and rock stars playing alternate reality versions of themselves. It's an intergenerational piece and it uh, also kind of has a commentary about living in the Trump era. Right before Trump gets nominated as uh, the Republican candidate, and um, it's really a moment where I think there's a tremendous uh, energy and excitement in the downtown New York scene, whether it's artists, musicians, actors, the people that I'm working with, um, that feels like so progressive and so interesting, and yet, it's kind of bracketed by like the worst, most uh, reactionary politics that we've seen maybe in our lifetime. I, I also felt like with gentrification that there's that was the other thing that was making it uh, really vital or important to capture that moment, because I've just noticed that so many of the spaces where our actors or musicians are performing are folding in, you know, being bought up by corporate entities. Um, and, you know, things seem to really be changing in New York at that time. I just had a dream that we were our own cover band. Well, were we any good? Nah. As I was going through these shoots, I'm documenting all these spaces, I'm capturing all these performances, and whether I use them in a film or not, in the end, it doesn't matter. I, I want to have that archive. Um, so I had that and then the archive for raw footage, which allowed for you to hear the full conversations of all the different actors. You can see all the uncut, uncut footage, so it's kind of like this transparency in terms of how I made my decisions. And the hate was so profound, it was like, you could feel it. I'm often, often referencing, uh, you know, like mass culture trauma, and I think that really captures uh, what was happening in the United States at that time. So I decided the best way to, to do that was to confront it head on, uh, act as if like the band was just on tour and fell into the protests at the Republican convention. And, you know, we would just like walk around and, and see what happened and join in whatever way we could. I'm really interested in getting people to question like what what is reality? Like where does the fiction end and the reality begin? And I feel like you can get a certain kind of rawness working with non-actors that you can't get otherwise. Like I'm not interested in naturalism per se. You know, you think of somebody who has like the ensemble yeah. group, I think of like Fassbender or, you know, that kind of style of acting, which is not naturalistic necessarily. Um, and, you know, and it's much more about the relationships between the people who are performing. For example, in Tour Without End, I do have great actors. You know, that's Kate Volk and Jim Fletcher, who really helped kind of steer scenes in different directions and bring a kind of intensity and rawness that wouldn't otherwise be there. Uh, however, 
there's something to be said for like having just like the fresh response uh, from that's based in someone's personal experience. And that's kind of important to me. You know, I want love to survive. Right, right, right. I want, I don't want to be she in the story. Right. I want to be they in the story. Oh, look. I don't really remember why that's here. <laughs> I think counterculture is uh, central to all of my work, um, whether it's questioning what what is the nature of uh, how we posit or describe what counterculture is, how do we actually rebel when everything that we do is immediately kind of co-opted into the larger dominant culture. This is from Noah's Yes. Um, this is, you know, back when I was but a child. The punk scene was something that I was really into in Philadelphia when I was um, young. I went to all of those, you know, kind of hardcore shows and I loved them and I also was kind of repelled by them because there really is a deeply reactionary element in it, even though it's also completely, you know, steeped in ideas about rebellion. So I found it to be very confusing, in particular coming from being a young adolescent, uh, you know, and with all the sexism that's involved in that culture. That, that was part of my interest. It's like, where do women find their space uh, in that scene? And how do we actually rebel? What the fuck? Tess. Tess, what are you doing? Politics is like a dirty word in, in this country, uh, but it's actually just the way we negotiate in the world, you know? Even those characters in Tour Without End, they're engaging in a, in a sort of politics of their own, whether it's like their own internal um, hierarchy or, you know, conversations between the generations of younger and older people. I mean, it, it's actually relevant to our everyday lives, too like you know be mad or say something and like everyone expects you to be angry and no one ever expects you to cry there's this the struggles of being an artist which um, are difficult enough and existing in new york is hard um, but then there's no one can escape history no matter how great of a performer you are or how much you have a, a counterculture that you're engaged with. 